Hi, I'm Trisha Strosky, and I'm honored to be here today for this program, joining Zara. I currently live in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, and those of you who are perhaps fans of the National Park System, I'm just a couple of miles away from the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I grew up in Akron, Ohio, that's adjacent to here, and lived most of my adult life in Los Angeles, and then went over to Eastern Europe to serve in the Peace Corps, made my way back to Ohio, and my background has inclu included being in advertising and communications, hypnotherapy, an author, government work, and more. That's really cool. So what inspired you to pursue writing among your many other careers, ranging from Peace Corps to hypnotherapy, as you mentioned? When I was in the fourth grade, I, be I became interested in journals, and that's about the time I started reading the daily newspaper and I was kind of fascinated by it and even put out with the help of my cousin, we put out a little family newspaper, but I always enjoyed writing. And I like that you can be creative, inspirational, and you can always, you know, switch a phrase around, add a new word and it can make, make a difference. Maybe it's just like cooking or something, just add something extra and it, it, you know, greatly inspires the reader or gives them a laugh or whatever. It makes it very, a very rich experience. Yeah, for sure. So how do you balance all your interests and your writing career with your personal life? Because it sounds like you're involved in so many different things. Well, well, I am, and people often mention this to me, but I mean, I do have days that I just kind of co totally zonk up. But first of all, I, I plan and schedule things. And if you know, if something isn't going to work out or something, I always have something on the back burner uh, to pull in. So, you know, that works out. So it makes it for an easy transition. And, you know, I set, I set a lot of goals to essentially balance my life for keeping in contact with people and attending events. I work hard to maintain what I feel is a pretty good balance. Yeah, that's important. So how has your formal education translated to your writing? Well, actually I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Akron in communications and I was specializing in advertising, but actually I concentrated on writing. And then I found out from other experiences such as, well, you have varied media such as print is different than broadcasting. and when live media, you have to be concerned perhaps about time and in a magazine article or newspaper, well, you have a certain length, but you might have more editorial license there because of, uh, you know, bounded by time. So, I mean, I always liked, you know, newspapers and magazines and reading and my Master's degree is in organizational leadership from Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. I primarily took that online, but there was a little bit in person. I was living in LA at the time. And then there was a chance to go over to Italy for a class and I took my mother there, but my thesis for the program was called The Blank Page. And it was simply about how everything in life essentially starts as a blank page. If it's writing, it gets filled in, but if it's a building, Somebody had to dream it up or whatever it is, a school, a project, it all started with a blank page. But bit by bit, word by word, it's, it's built from there. And because that was also a Jesuit institution, they had a nice creative, artistic and social justice angle to their classes. So that added to it as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's true, everything boils down to that one blank page in the end. So um, you mentioned traveling and moving around a lot in your life. How do you think that has impacted your writing? You know, I had a teacher in grade school and she, she said something to the effect that travel really educates and broadens you. Those weren't her exact words, but you certainly gain insight from every place you go. Go, oh, I've been to all 50 states. I've been to 40 some countries. And I've been to every continent except Australia, which got canceled because of the pandemic, but hopefully I'll get there one of these days. But you're certainly enriched by 
the cultures and traditions and many things that America takes for granted that we often think that we're right about stuff, but you learn a lot and many people in other countries live simpler, but in many ways it's deeper and richer. And so you can learn lessons all along the way. Yeah, as a traveler myself, I, I completely agree with all of that. So, um, you know, today's like uh, interviews, like mostly focused on your most like recent book, There's a Rooster in My Bathroom. So what was your purpose in writing that book? What message were you trying to convey to readers? Well, for a long time, I'd had a goal of writing a book. And when I began to pursue this, I started to think about a, a number of ideas, and then you have to hone it down. But I came up with the title that there's a rooster in my bathroom because I actually did have a rooster in my bathroom as the Peace Corps for a little bit of time. But for people not to think it was just really a, a children's book, the subtitle is A Quest for Meaning in the Bathroom, the Boardroom, and Beyond. So each chapter is intended to inspire or provide some humor. I like to think that there's a chapter in there for everyone. Most of my chapters are short and I end each one with an inspirational note, a little quotation. And I also had a lot of experiences that might be kind of unique, being in the Peace Corps, living in another country and immersing yourself was unique. I was also involved in Hollywood, the theatrical community when I was in Los Angeles. And the, the Northridge earthquake was a big thing for me and many people in the Southern California, but huge tragedy, but I essentially lost my condo and a lot of other things. And I mean, there was one time in life a few years before, before that happened, I was watching the news and somebody had lost everything. Maybe it was a hurricane or tornado, I don't remember what. And I thought like, I can't imagine what that would be like, but then I was that person in that situation. So I made this book sort of like, to be a journey, like you take each, each portion of your life mile by mile, and you pick up the lessons and the sights and the sounds, and you might as well enjoy it. And as I said, I also put an ending on each chapter too to further inspire from famous quotations and some of my own personal ones. Yeah, that's really interesting. So um, your book reads like scenes and separate stories in each chapter. Which story is your favorite and why? Yeah, thanks for noticing that are about the, the scenes and stories. I had to think about this question. In many ways, I have favorites due to different reasons, but I boiled it down to the chapter called Blinded by the Light. And I'll review what happened in that chapter. I was in the process of going into the Peace Corps and I hadn't gotten my invitation as yet. And I contacted them and they said it was it was in the works, but it'd probably be a few weeks away. So I kind of put that on the back burner, not really thinking about that. I was with a client for hypnosis. It was one Saturday afternoon. And in a hypnosis session, you chat about things first and discuss. And then the client is placed in a recliner, lies back, the lights go down and relax. And you work on a positive script for them. I was up close to the client and then I moved back to my desk and there was a little mirror on the wall, like a foot by a foot, just a small little mirror. And all of a sudden, this light poured out. It was like lightning and shooting stars and swirling all around me. And I, I you know, I didn't know what was going on. And, and yet I had to continue working with the client while enjoying this lovely light show which I was such in disbelief about and it went on for probably about a minute or so then it went back into the mirror and swirled around there and then it moved out into the wall next to the mirror and swirled around there and then it dissolved and so when I was driving home I was thinking you know what was that well when I got home I opened up my, my email and I noted that I had received an email from the Peace Corps. 
I checked a couple of other emails first because I was a little nervous to open it. And I said a little prayer and then opened it. And there was my invitation and date and country assignment in my email, which was I was not expecting for a couple of weeks. And that was also a Saturday. And by the time it would have been after five o'clock in DC. So somebody was working late on a Saturday night, but then I noted the time. I thought about the incident and I noted the time that it came in. It arrived at 2.03 Los Angeles time. And that is the exact moment that that light came out from the mirror. I mean, I, I took this to be a sign. And the reason I picked it for my favorite story is because the serendipity of it. And sometimes things just happen and you don't know where they come from or whatever. It should be nice to get a little message like that or a lot like some other times too, but it indicated to me that I definitely was intended to do this. I was interested in going to the Peace Corps since I was a teenager and I was a more mature adult and finally acting on it, but that light certainly inspired me. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty crazy story. I mean, I wish I could get a little signal like that too. Um, so what is your advice for aspiring writers based on your personal experiences? Okay. Well, here's something, just do it. Now I know that seems very simple, but I participated in a write your book in the weekend seminar. Now that doesn't totally mean you're finishing the book, but here's what happened. We would have a writing session. I forget for how long. And then you would stop for five or 10 minutes and then go back to writing. And then just went on like that. I think it was three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but it kept you going. And that was the only thing you were really worried about that week. And I just took it online, but some people were in person, but it kept pushing you. And you're encouraged not to get bogged down. Should I use this word? Should I use that word? Does that need a period just to get it out? And then you could smooth it out later. But if you want to write a book, sit down, give yourself some time and get a lot out on paper and you can go back and edit later. So you don't have, uh, you're not overly involved in little tiny details, which aren't all so important. So don't overthink it, enjoy the process and read yourself all kinds of things, books, magazines, stuff you wouldn't normally read to broaden your perspective. And when you're writing your book, concentrate on your reader, picture somebody like that person you're writing for so that your book serves your readers. Yeah, that's a really interesting tidbit. I've never heard that before, like thinking of your audience while you're writing. That's really interesting. So um, that's all the questions I had for you today. Do you have anything else that you want to add about your book or anything else that you might want like viewers to know about you? Well, I, want to, I want to read the quotation from the end of the chapter that I talked about with the bright light. And it's from Marcus Aurelius. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy and to love. I think that's a nice quotation. You can certainly use that every day. I wanted to encourage people to overcome negative thinking. And if you're a negative thinker, keep it to yourself. Don't put your negativity on someone else. No matter what you say, I can't do that because I'm too old, but really you have more experience. I can't do that because I'm too young, but maybe you have the energy. Whatever it is, you need to flip your story if it's not serving you. And essentially, it's not true. So I also have some notes here to, to think, plan, do, review. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, the gratefulness is like very important to keep in mind every day. So that was a really interesting quote. Certainly. Yeah, so that's all for today. Thank you, Ms. Ostrowski. Is that the right Ostrowski, yes. Ostrowski, okay. <laughs> for taking the time to talk with me today. And for anybody watching, if you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.
and I'll see you guys next week. Can I show my book? Oh, yes, please. Okay, here we are. So I wanted some people at least see the cover. It's, it is actually has, I hope they can see that well, it actually has the rooster in the bathroom. So it's, you know, it's kind of cute there. Okay. Yeah, Thanks that is for... really cute. So how did you get that illustrated? Well, I hired an illustrator and I conveyed to him what I wanted it to look like. I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of tricky and all, uh, you know, to, to have the rooster, like being surprised there was a human, <laughs> the human being surprised as well. So I, I wanted it to attract people's attention and you know, be fun as well. And he did a great job, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so.